Sermon of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I on Dominica within the Octave of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, 9 June, 2024 Anno Domini. Third Dominica after Pentecost, commemoration of the Feast of St. Primus and St. Filiatian, Martyrs. Today is the Dominica within the octave of the uh, most sacred heart of Jesus. It's also the third Dominica after Pentecost. The epistle is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter the Apostle, chapter 5. There is, Be humble therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in the time of visitation, casting all your carefulness upon him, because he had care of you. Be sober and watch, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion goeth about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist ye strong in faith. Knowing that the self same affliction is made to that your fraternity which is in the world, but the God of all grace, which hath called us unto his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, he will perfect you having suffered a little, and confirm and establish you. To him be glory and empire forever and ever. Amen. Please thank for today's gospel. Just taken from Gospel St. Luke chapter 15. At that time there approached publicans and sinners unto him for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, That this man receiveth sinners, and eateth with, him, with them. And he spake to them this parable, saying, What man of you having an hundred sheep, and if he had lost one of them, that he not leave the ninety-nine in the desert, and goeth after that which was lost, until he find it, find, find it. And when he had found it, he laid it upon his shoulders, rejoicing, and coming home called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I say to you that even so, there shall be joy in heaven upon one sinner that doth penance, then upon ninety-nine just that need not penance. Of what a woman having ten groves, if she leaves one grove, doth she not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently until she find? When she had found, call it together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the grove which I had lost. So I say to you, there shall be joy before the angels of God upon one sinner that doth penance. As part of the words of this gospel, be seated. There shall be joy before the angels of God upon one sinner that doth penance. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The lesson of today's gospel is self-evident truth of salvation as it is. Because not only that the penitential heart and soul of the soul of the true, of the true Catholic, uh, which the disposition of the faith and the belief must be there, otherwise there's no penance, acceptable in front of God and that person does not do anything and does not accomplish any any uh, merit in front of God uh, so that includes all heretics obviously and those who are excommunicated from the church apostate sectarians no matter how much they think they perform penance they are not performing anything in front of God so that that Catholic faith must be practiced and firmly believed and they must be members of the church in order to the, the true Catholic Church there is, so they must be subject to our authority in order to obtain any merit in, for anything that they do 
in front of God, and not even if they think that they uh, obtain any merits for their actions and so forth, accomplishments, it does not count so long as they are heretics and outside the church. So that's the proper distinction that needs to be observed. So therefore that meritorious works in front of God and which includes the, the acts of penance, which is in general terms concluded in the doctrine of the church as those things that are pleasing to God, including uh, almsgiving and penitential works, hardships of life, and those things that one has to endure from the arch enemy, the devil, as the church has to endure in certain and to die today's times, as the devil is persecuting the church severely and, and uh, driving us into difficulties and hardships and so forth, and holds those who should be Catholic and do not wish to be Catholic, do not recognize this Holy See as the true Holy Apostolic See of Rome, although we are in exile in these kind of circumstances. And so therefore the devil holds them as hostages and they are his slaves. Therefore they, are, they have no inclination to help us to continue the mission of the church, salvation of souls. So even in those circumstances, we still continue the faith and we practice the Catholic faith. We hold in our hands as the rightful and true sovereign pontiff, the divine deposit of faith entrusted in, by our Lord to the hands of the apostles and the first Pope, St. Peter, of which, whom we have quoted just his, from his epistle. To teach us the lesson that th there is no submission to the uh, the evils of the devil and his temptations that they must be firmly resisted by the soul of the true Catholic. Now those who are not truly Catholic who believe heresies, they are subject to the devil and his will. And they cannot escape it because that supernatural power and strength of the devil overcomes them and there is no human power that can overcome the devil except by the grace of God and his help. And God will not help such souls to recover themselves from the hands of the devil unless they are actually Catholic. It's a enclosed circle that is impossible to, to break free from and so they are stuck. And as long as they frequent places run by heretics, their assemblies, they are lost. They cannot recover themselves and God will not help them because that primary requirement that their obligation to be truly Catholic is missing. They don't seek it. They don't seek to be reconciled with the church or admitted for the first time in their life into the bosom of the Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church, outside of which there is no salvation. And so they cannot help themselves and the devil holds them as his slaves. And moreover, time, he uses them by their inaction to molest the church and to, to, to deprive, deprive us of the rightful help that we should obtain from such people because, because, they have the audacity to call themselves Catholic, and they are none of it. It's, that's the conclusion as it is. That's, it's a very sad thing and development and part of the general apostasy foretold by, among others, also St. Peter and St. Paul and St. Jude is in his epistle and, and our Lord and, and, and the prophets. So it's all written in the Holy Scripture in several places. That these kind of, this kind of, uh, state of affairs, the unbelief will be so rampant and so widespread that it truly will be very, very, very few who will remain faithful to God and retain the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. And so in today's Gospel, it is evident that our Lord teaches us that to be patient under these difficulties and hardships because they are not only meritorious, but they themselves try away the devil himself. Because when the devil sees that the soul is not quitting, the soul is resisting in that resistance and pain, painful, painful endurance of those difficulties. The devil is discouraged because he sees that his work, does, his evils don't work on that soul. They don't accomplish what the devil wishes that soul to accomplish. That means to fall into despair and distrust and unbelief ultimately. But again, the supernatural stranglehold of the devil upon those souls who are heretics is overcoming all this because they are not receiving the essential part that is essential for them to recover. That means the help of God. 
without the help of God, they cannot recover, them, recover themselves, and they are they are truly like slaves, unhelped, uh, not helped by God, and they cannot help themselves. They don't have the power. The devil overcomes them. He blinds their intellect. They don't see the truth. They are incapable of recovery, and God leaves them to their own misery. That's one of the worst kind of punishments that the human soul can obtain in this life, to be subject to the slavery of Satan. It is one of the most horrifying punishments because they cannot see it. They don't see it. They, don't, they are incapable of hearing the truth. They hear our sermons, our publications, yet they are approaching from the wrong part, from the wrong sense, from the wrong approach. They don't put it in practice. They fail in it. Because God is not helping them to, to do anything because otherwise they continue or have the intention, even internally, to continue in their heresies, in their unbelief. And God does not reward infidelity. Not at all. And so there's no merit and there's no help from Him. That means the supernatural help of Christ our Lord. Because they don't merit it and they don't wish to build upon it with their cooperation, with their grace, divine grace, the supernatural power of God that would otherwise work on these souls and bring them to that, what St. Peter today, the first Pope calls it, the resistance to the devil. And that's not only resistance to the devil as he calls it, but it says, whom resist ye strong in faith. And what does it mean, strong in faith? That means the trust in God's help when God sees that the soul is putting up that resistance to the devil. When the soul is not quitting, when the soul is enduring and carrying the daily crosses and enduring those difficulties that the devil puts in his path. That's the reward right there. Because by doing so, carrying the, soul, the crosses, the soul is testifying to that or imit imitating Christ our Lord who carried the cross to the Calvary and died on it. That's the meritorious part. By imitating God on the cross and carrying his cross, we obtain great merit in those difficulties. Of course, that doesn't, doesn't exclude the, 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 the hardships to and our work, daily work, for that to accomplish those temporal tasks and so forth. But it's overall result that counts. What intention the soul has to please God in those sufferings and carrying them and, and enduring them patiently, asking God for help to be, to be uh, liberated from that, those evils that the devil puts in our path. And if the devil was not restrained by God, he would cause loss more. He would exterminate the whole human race if it was possible, if God would permit it. But that is impossible to happen because then among them, among the human race, there's the promise of Christ our Lord. Behold, I am with you all days until the consummation of the world. And that promise was given First of all, the first possessor of the keys to the kingdom of heaven, the first pope. And because the papacy is part of the revealed faith, is what is called the fide. So that has to remain, and it cannot be excluded from that promise. As the Servacantis heretics erroneously and heresy declare. And also, those who are faithful to Christ our Lord, they are rewarded in that supernatural help of God. Because he promises how much he will, our, my heavenly father says, our Lord, how much he will the good, give the good spirit to them that, that truly love him, that truly love God, that want to save their soul. That desire to save one's soul is the proof of the love of God. Because then that soul puts the value, supernatural value, of saving one's soul ahead of the human and carnal value of the life upon this earth as it is. 
that the desire to be rather excluded from the life and be with Christ our Lord overcomes the soul and establishes that path of life as it is, that everything else in the life is subordinated to that holy purpose of saving one's soul. And the soul would rather lose his life than to lose that chance. That is, and it is truly, a gift of God, first and foremost. And we have to be thankful for it, always to Christ our Lord. But it is also the grace of God working in that soul and accomplishing that elevation of the soul from that state that the soul was previously before that grace of God was working or accomplishing those things. It's a gradual state until that soul reaches the highest levels, which is called mystical theology, and we will not enlarge on that in today's sermon. But that that reward is possible is recorded in the Holy Scripture because if anyone love, loves me, he will keep my commandments and so forth. And then our Lord speaks about him and his Father, God the Father, and says that we will come to him if anyone loves me and make our abode with him. That means that that soul will, will, will become by participation divine, by that union of the soul with God, which is the highest possible state of the soul in this life. It's a foretaste of heaven and promise that that soul will be saved, provided the soul does not fall willfully into mortal sins and so forth. But God protects such souls, and that's why he calls them elect, not because they merited it, but because he had chosen them to obtain it. Because it is truly, it is truly a gift of God and nothing else. And we must be thankful for it. That even in these hardships and difficulties and what the church has to go through, the primary task of ours is to keep the faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, entrusted to us and also obtained by us by the mercy of God and his great, his gratuitous help as it is of his divine grace and establishing us into this office that we don't desire and never have and although it's very difficult and very few believe us it still does not alter the truth which we cannot deny and they are not, not able to deny that this is the truth and we are truly who we are and holding the keys to the kingdom of heaven as the right of the sovereign pontiff, teaching the truth of salvation and defending the faith as it is. And those who don't believe us, they are robbing themselves of immense good of being part of the church and therefore are outside and severed from the chance of salvation, therefore, on the way to hell, on their way to hell, if they die in such a state of their soul. So then, in conclusion of this part of today's sermon, that what the, what our Lord says in the beginning of today's gospel when he was attacked verbally by the Pharisees and the scribes, this man received sinners and hated with them. That old man goes out and, and keeps the 99 sheep and does not go after that one sheep that was lost. God would gladly come back, O oh Lord, and be crucified again for that one soul, to recover that soul and convert it. Because that's much, that's how much he loves us and how much value that one soul has in the sight of God. Because that soul is endowed with that supernatural imprint 
of divinity which we all possess. That's why we are made to the image and likeness of God. That imprint of divinity on our soul is there by our baptism is in increased and so forth. To have, to have the right reason and to be able to discern right from wrong and to be pleasing to God, cooperating by our free will, which God granted, granted to every human soul, by our free will with the grace that God sends for us to accomplish those things that please Him. And that's the gift of God, immense gift, that we have to cherish and, and be grateful for to Christ our Lord, that we have obtained it. And that He created us through His likeness and image as the proof of His love for us. Being desirous always to help us, and that means to help His Church to continue the sacred and holy task, salvation of souls, which we do accomplish by these, our obligations, although there are very few who hear it. We wish for them to reconsider where they stand and to admonish them by our apostolic authority to reconcile themselves with the Holy Mother Church, to approach us for being admitted upon their abjuration of heresies and examination of their knowledge of the faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, the Catechism of the Council of Trent, which we require for them to know and to understand. And it's not a difficult task, but if they continue going into assemblies of the, of the devil, that means the heretics, they will only obtain eternal punishment in hell after they die. Nothing else. It is impossible to, see, to be saved when one frequents assemblies of heretics and infidels and apostates. Because there's only one faith, and that's Catholic tradition that leads to heaven and one church that teaches it. By definition, therefore, those evil trees bearing evil fruit, the heretics, are incapable of teaching the truth because God will not let them teach it. God will allow them always to fall into these heretical errors so that they could be seen for the truth who they are, enemies of God, servants of Satan. And God will repay it and they will pay for it because they serve the devil in destroying souls. On the other hand, the Holy Mother Church, divine institution, by the power of God, the assistance of the Holy Ghost, we teach the truth and we cannot err in matters of faith and morals because God is leading us to tell the truth and to declare it. And by our apostolic authority, therefore, we teach the truth infallibly as God is the one who protects that infallibility of the doctrine that we declare for the salvation of souls, of all those souls who may hear us and feel upon that for the edifying purpose of others, obviously, but most of all for their salvation. And those who will regret it are those who will deny it. And at the end they will truly regret it because God will punish them for their unbelief and denial of the truth as he teaches it through his church as we teach it and declare it and they deny it that means they regret they will regret that they do not possess the faith and are not strong in it and therefore they are incapable by definition in that in the episode of St. Peter today when he speaks about resisting the devil whom resist ye strong in faith. Therefore, those who are not strong in faith, those who do not believe, they cannot resist the devil, obviously. It is impossible for them to resist the devil as heretics, because the devil owns their souls, and they are perverted in it, deformed, and therefore, not only displeasing, but they become ugly in, this, in the sight of God, and darkened by sin, they seek only their own inventions to gratify themselves in them and to justify themselves in them, in those heresies they believe, declaring unto themselves only the sentence of hell, which they deserve rightfully because by professing themselves to be wise and to know better than God and His Church, they 
establish themselves and judge themselves unworthy of his kingdom, eternal kingdom of heaven, to which only those who are truly Catholic lead themselves upon a virtuous and holy life and accomplish their salvation by the grace and mercy of God. And for such we pray and for the conversion of those who are sinners, that God has mercy on them and teaches them the truth, that they hear our words and our doctrine and sever themselves from those evil heresies that they believed in times past and accomplish the task of con conversion by the grace of God and his divine mercy. For such we pray and hope and beg God that he converts them. And for those who will not, we admonish them to reconsider and we pray for their conversion, that God grants them his mercy and converts them so that they could save their soul. For otherwise, they will not be able to, they will pay to God for all eternity in hell. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Benedictio Dei Omnipotenti, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, Descend at super vos, et manet semper. Amen.